Hey, how's it going? I'm Anthony Todd. Today I'm going to show you how to do the PVC free fall lab um, on online. This is a very typical lab you'll find in any um, AP Physics C or AP Physics class or even in college. So pretty much this is a lab. It's actually an online simulation where you have this cylinder and you're going to drop um, the cylinder through this tube and there's a photo grade at the bottom right here um, that will give you a time. So it'll give you a time of blocked and a time of unblocked. Okay, so pretty much what this is, and you'll see that it has nail slots in it when I pull it up later. And just to let you all know, the cylinder itself is five centimeters in length, and the nail slots are actually five centimeters from each position. So there's like nine nail slots, I believe. So pretty much what happens is you'll click on this, it'll be like copper. It'll give you an example and an option to pick what material you want your cylinder to be. And usually, uh, just, just leave it as copper. And over here, um, you get to pick where it's at. So where it's um, conducted. And today, we're going to do uh, Vega. Vega is just a small celestial body in our solar system. So I'm going to kind of do that as an example and uh, kind of show you how this lab works. So pretty much what happens is once you click your um, material for your cylinder and you click where it's conducted, you just click this right here. And this will actually fall down to the nail slot that you have selected. Example, there'll be a nail slot over here. Now please note, this is random. It'll be one through nine. And you just keep clicking on until you get the right one. An example, this could be number three. This is two, one, okay. So once you click this and it'll fall. Now, in order for you to get this to fall, you actually have to click this nail. And once you click the nail right here, it actually pulls it out and you'll see this object start to accelerate downwards. And as it falls, it's gonna, uh, make a, I guess you'd say, it'll give you a time of block and unblock. So example, let's say it's like time unblock was like 3.5 seconds and time of block was like 3.25 seconds. Okay, so pretty much what this means is as this uh, cylinder is falling through your photo gate, example, it's giving you this difference in time. The difference in time right here, from right here, this blocked and unblocked, is your delta T okay and that's telling you when this cylinder entered this region and when it left okay so what we're gonna do with that is you're actually gonna find the velocity final of this cylinder as it falls through now in order to do this the velocity final of this will be equal to the average velocity alright so the average velocity so, example, if, how you would do that is the velocity average for this sense would just be the actual block's length. So the length of the block is just five centimeters. And you would divide that by your change in time. So from the unblock to block time. So if you want to turn up the meters, it's 0 0.05 divided by some time delta t in seconds. And that will give you meters per second. Now this is where the tricky part of this lab comes in. Example, in order for you to graph this, for example, um, this lab is going to ask you to use graphical analysis. You have to find this distance the object has fallen. So the distance to nail one, um, the distance from nail two and downwards, and the distance from nail three, and etc. Okay, that's where this gets tricky because of this right here. Whenever you find the average velocities, we're kind of going back to this. So the cylinder right here. So whenever we find the average velocity, um, the average velocity is actually, whenever you do this, <laughs> it's actually right in the middle of the cylinder. So example, whatever number you get, that velocity is of the cylinder right at the middle. Okay, and that's kind of what an average is. Remember, you're taking you know some points over here and some points over here, and you're kind of finding where they kind of meet in the middle. Okay, so that's where that average velocity lies. Now, if you notice, it's right in the middle. So what's interesting is that's actually 2.5 centimeters down. This is where a lot of my students make, miss up. So example, the distance from nail one to the actual photo gate, so example, where your average velocity is, isn't just five centimeters. A lot of kids just want to put five centimeters right here. And that's actually true if the velocity was being recorded at the bottom of the actual tube, but it's not. The actual velocity we are getting is about 2.5 centimeters below that because that's the average. So what you have to do is you have to add, so the distance of one, so distance of nail one is going to be five centimeters plus this distance right here. 
So actually, your distance of nail one will be 7.5 centimeters or 0 0.075 meters, okay? So that is a big thing I have to explain to my students. And quite frankly, this is, this is when, I, when I've tutored to help kids before with this lab, um, this is where they, they get mixed up. So you can understand that, that the velocity you're finding, the average velocity is actually not at the, the, the beginning of your cylinder or at the bottom, but actually in the middle, you can then kind of make sense of this, okay? So now I'm gonna actually show you how to plug this into Excel and how the actual lab runs. Okay, hey, now, whenever you open up the PVC Freefall Lab, it'll actually give you this screen right here. And like I said, you had this PVC uh, tube, and we notice there are nail positions here. And like I said, if you click on this, it changes the actual um, composition of this cylinder that you're dropping. But quite frankly, you just all, uh, just leave it as sock as copper, okay? And over here, you can see where you can change it as conducted to Earth, Moon, Mars, or Venus, or Jupiter, or Vesta. And we're going to do Vesta, okay? Like I said Vesta. I, I think I said, or I said Vega, forgive me. This is actually Vesta. Um, so, and notice right here the nail placement. Again, it's not in any coherent order. You can't click up and down. It just has to, it's kind of random how it works. So the first thing we're going to do is um, you're going to make an Excel sheet or a Google sheet um, that has the number of nail slots. Notice there are nine slots, so I have one through nine. I have the height of those slots, um, the pass time, and the average velocity. The pass time is just the difference that it takes the object to be um, from when, when, when the photo gate was blocked versus unblocked. We talked about that. And the average velocity, that's, that's how fast that object was moving at the very, very end. Now, in order for us to solve for, for this, we're going to graph this. Now, notice this pass time is only giving us the velocity of the object at the very bottom. Okay, so what we have here is we have the height of these nails, which we can calculate. And we know how fast the object is going initially, which will be zero. So again, if I click on this, notice it'll fall really slowly. And it'll lodge itself right there. And then when I click on this nail, the object will start to fall, okay? And then it falls down. And like I said, this is a very, very small celestial body. And there you go. There is your unblocked time and your block time, and the difference is the past time. So example, we know the initial velocity. We can calculate the final velocity, and we know the actual vertical displacement. And we were looking to solve for the actual gravitational acceleration. So if you notice, even though we are collecting time, it's just to help us find the velocity final. So what I tell my kids to do, the best way to do this would actually would be, to, would, would, would be to graph this using kinematics. So we know that the velocity final squared is equal to velocity initial squared plus 2g distance. So that d is just going to be the height the object has fallen. And if you notice, our velocity initial component actually goes away. So if you were doing the typical y equals mx plus b, we can solve for this. Vf um, squared divided by 2d will actually give us our gravitational acceleration. So notice you have velocity final squared. That will be our rise, so our y component. And the 2d will be our x, so that's our run. So again, well, slope is just rise over run. So we actually, if we graph this, we should get a nice linear line, and we can place a line of best fit. So the first thing we're going to do is top up that height component. Remember, the height from each one of these nails is 5 centimeters. But remember, um, the average velocity is 2.5 centimeters below this because that's halfway on that cylinder. So we have to account for that. So, so for the height, I'm going to be, that's going to be 0 0.075, okay? And that's how many meters that is. So example, I'm going to add 5 centimeters to this. And what's interesting about Excel is you can just click equals, click the previous cell, and click add or plus 0 0.05 and that is you know five centimeters and click enter and if you don't want to do that for every single cell you can just grab this right here and you can just pull it down and there you go all right so what we're going to do here is now notice here we had nail placement seven and the pass time was nine point point two three six nine and i'm going to subtract that from the other from the block time so you got to do a little bit of math so i have my calculator right here with me <coughs> And at nail position seven, the pass time was 0 0.1231 seconds. And again, to find the average velocity for all of these, example, remember velocity is just going to be the um, how long that cylinder is divided by the pass time. So we're going to take equals to the, the length of the cylinder, which is 0 0.05 
divided that by our pass time. So we're going to click on this cell right here. That's going to tell this cell to take the length of the cylinder and divide it by this pass time. Now obviously this is going to be zero because there's nothing there, but if I drag this down, you can actually see that there it is. There's my velocity um, for, for nail position 7, so 0.4 meters per second. So I'm going to click on this again to get a random one, if it lets me. Okay, you got to hit reset. So now I'm, I'm at nail position 2. I'm going to wait for it to come down because it takes a very, 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 very long time on this uh, celestial object. I'm going to pull this, and it's falling, and I have an unblocked time of 11.1967 minus 10.9825. Again, you can see these right here. So at nail position 2, the unblocked time is 0 0.2142. And it already does my velocity for me. This is kind of what's awesome about this. So I reset it, find a different nail position. So here I am at position one. So obviously Vesta is a very, very small celestial object because it's taking a very long time for this cylinder to move its way down there. And once it is, I pull the nail. And then I will graph my unblocked versus blocked. There it is. Or so I would take the difference. So 12.3955 minus 12.3. 1162. That gives me an unblocked time at position 1 of 0 0.2793. <clears throat> Hit reset. No position number 4. So now I'm going to plug it in. So now you see what I'm doing here. I'm just taking these at random. That's why, you know, example. You can, you, you can try to go down methodically, but sometimes this can be a tedious process. So I'm at nail no position number 4. So that's why I just like to just kind of do it wherever it's at. You're going to do the same thing. Now it's this process that we're doing is the exact same thing for any other celestial object. Okay, So any other uh, place that this is being conducted on, the process is still the same. So example at position number four, the unblocked versus block time is the difference of 0 0.1592. And then again, we'll reset it. If I do have seven, I have seven already. At nine, I do not have nine, so I'm going to run this. I should have maybe picked a little bit of faster <laughs> celestial or a more massive celestial object for this experiment. You can actually see it just kind of slowly running now, but this might be good to kind of show you how to uh, just do this. All right, so we have an unblocked time of 6.23 uh, seconds minus 6.1206 seconds, and at nail position nine. That block versus unblock time is 0 0.1094. Hit in. I'm going to reset it. I have four. I have one. Five. I do not have five, I believe. I do not. So I'm going to let it roll. Okay. Unblock. And always, whenever you do this, make sure that you have the, the correct composition and the best. So sometimes when you click reset, it could try to try to, try to change these. Okay. So just be aware of that. So 5464 minus 0 0.4206, and that gives me at nail placement 5, uh, 0 0.1438. So you can actually see <clears throat> that these numbers are getting smaller. So I need nail position 3, 6, or 8. So there's 8. So again, like I said, this is just totally random. I wish they would uh, add a feature in there to where you could just... Uh, pick which nail placement you would like, but um, this is a great you know, online simulation and they, they have done a great job with this. All right, nail position eight, we are seeing a block first unblock time, uh, 0.5666 minus 0.4509. So at nail position number eight, we have an unblock first block time of 0 0.1157. So if you're following along, you can double check these numbers for me. So I need three or six, hit reset. Oh, there's th oh. ah, sometimes you get happy like me. There's three. I clicked on six twice, and you keep going. Sometimes, like I said, I wish they would have had a feature where you can just select which one you want. And my cylinder is in place. Also, make sure you don't pull the pin before the cylinder gets seated. Otherwise, you will get incorrect numbers because you will add an initial velocity component to it. Okay. So we have what's this? Is 0.2194 minus 0 0.0387. 
This is position number three. 0 0.1807 and we are almost there now we're at position number six so again you will do this exact same thing the exact same process for wherever this is being conducted on so earth the moon jupiter um, wherever this is going to be located at you can still do it or mars i believe mars is the other one and i pull it man we are a really really small celestial object okay all right, and we have 0 0.5538 minus 0.4214. And we get an unblocked first block time for position number six of 0 0.1324. Now, what's interesting to do is I kind of like, like, like to double check. Now, obviously, the number is going to be really small, or sorry, really large at the beginning because the um, object starts with rest. And as the object has more distance to fall, um, it will accelerate, you know, typically. Um, actually, well, the distance will be squared. So what's pretty cool is this. We see this is working out. Okay, now this is where the magic comes in. We're going to use this right here, and we're going to graph these. But now notice we got to graph the velocity squared. You know, so our average velocity is our velocity final. So we're just going to put another component right here, another uh, column, VF squared. Oops, excuse me, squared, and I'm going to bold it because I'm OCD. And what we're going to do is we're going to click equals this cell raised to the six so like you would do in a calculator squared and then sometimes it likes to suggest it for you but if not you just grab this button right here and pull it down and it has now squared all these velocities for me and over here I'm just going to do the same thing except I'm going to do for the two times my distance so 2d I'm just going to put 2d right there equals two so multiplied by my distance or my height which is right there and I'm going to pull it down. All right, so now I have these, and these are what I'm going to grab. Now notice, we're going to rise over run. So whenever Google does this, and whenever you do this, I don't know how it does in Excel, but whenever you do it in Google, it does X first, then Y. So like you're writing a coordinate system. So notice we are rising, so our Y component needs to be our BF squared. So I'm going to copy these. Um, another fun thing, make sure you, when you paste these, go to Paste Special values only otherwise it'll try to copy the function over and you'll give you some errors there so just remember that so if my students you're watching or somebody else just kind of remember that and the x component our run will be our 2d so i'm going to count all right so i'm going to copy this control c again i'll show you what happens if you do that notice it'll just give you a reference error so that's why you got to do all this uh, paste special values only so now we have x and y okay so now we're going to grab these so what I like to do is just highlight those, insert a chart. So Excel, it might be a graph or something. I, I can't remember. I use Excel in college. And if you notice, we do have a perfectly nice linear line right here, okay? And that's what this is graphing. It's graphing our velocity final squared with 2D. And the slope should be the gravitational acceleration. So let's click on this, and it'll allow us to customize these. So once you click on this, um, you could a trend line or just a line of best fit. That's what Google calls trend line. Well, that's what they call a line of best fit. I like to make mine red. Um, you can come down here and you can show the R squared value. Now notice this is going to be perfectly one because we kind of manipulated it that way. And label, we want to use the equation. So we want to know what the slope of this is. And there it is. So Y equals MX plus B. Okay. Um, so y equals mx plus b, there's, there's my mx. So this right here is the actual uh, gravitational acceleration of, Vega, uh, of uh, Vesta. So g is equal to uh, 0 0.221 meters per second, and that is squared, okay? And what's cool is we can look it up. Accel acceleration due to gravity on Vesta. Let's see what we get. Vesta, not have it. Usually, they have a nice little index somewhere. Uh, it is 0.22 meters per second squared, and we got 0.221. Okay, so again, we nailed it. And example of so example, this is the same way you would do all the labs. For example, if we were conducted on um, Vesta or Earth, Moon, Mars. Or Venus or Jupiter. So, for example, if you're doing this lab for you know college, or you're doing it for an AP physics class, or um, so something of that nature, um, you, you do this process. It's, it's the exact same way. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more physics content and labs. Thank you all. Have a great day.